I insist. Why didn't you listen to me? You know, I bet I can guess what's on your mind. Bet you can. Serious minds. Good to see you. Good to see you. Why didn't you listen to me? Listen, listen, listen. All right, check one, two, one, two. We are checking the sound right now to make sure everything's all right. Of course, you already know this is Professor Griff, public enemy, the minister of information. All right. All right. Let me know if you can hear me, family. Let me know if you can hear me within the sound of my voice. Somebody give me a thumbs up, shout out, black power sign, peace sign, something. Let me know if you can hear me. All right. The levels look like it's right over here. All right. You on, Griff? Mitch Mitchell, what's good with you? All right, greetings, family. How's everyone doing? All right, since everyone said that they can hear me, it's a beautiful thing. All right, once again, shout out to the Serious Minds family. Thank you once again for joining us. Um, very tumultuous kind of times, some trying times. I want to thank um, the Serious Minds family, and definitely I want to say from the outstart in the divine name of supreme being, I want to greet everyone a civilized greeting. Um, Hotep, Shalom, Peace, Abarigani, Free to Land, um, whatever greeting that you go by, Assalamu Alaikum, Black Power, whatever greeting you go by, whatever school of thought that you're from, I want to greet you uh, to make you feel right at home and comfortable. I want to thank everyone, starting from Quan, John Trey, Alex, the rest of the Serious Minds family for uh, sending condolences to me and my family for the passing of my old, one of my eldest brothers, um, James Alfonso Griffin. We, we call them fats and um, had some health issues and he transitioned at 81 years old. I'm going to de dedicate this show to my brother. Uh, we call simply call him fats. All right. So thank you very much for the condolences. I really appreciate that. All right. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Thank you for the support. Really appreciate that. All right, so give thanks, family. Uh, we got a very interesting show tonight. We're going to be on with our good brother um, and interviewing our good brother, Dr. Mawata Ashby. All right, so definitely stay tuned for that. Give me a few minutes to get some bit of the business out of the way. And family, you will definitely, definitely, definitely want to get you a pen and piece of paper, strap on your conscious cultural seatbelt, Strap on whatever it is. You know, they used to say back in the third grade, put on your thinking caps. We'll put the thinking cap, turn it on, and tighten it up just a little bit. All right. Okay. Um, shout out to all those individuals that have participated in the black alternative, excuse me, the alternative black studies course. All right. We revamped it. We turned it back on. And um, Yes, hopefully you're enjoying it. So if you would like to participate in the Alternative Black Studies course series, you can do that by going to www.seriousmindsinstitute.com. That's seriousmindsinstitute.com. Or you can simply go to my website, professorgriff.me. All right, access it there. But just go to Serious Minds Institute and access it um, that way. All right. And as always, if you're enjoying the streams, the information, um, everything we have to offer here at Serious Minds. There's a reason why we call it Serious Minds, because Serious Minds attract Serious Minds. All right. Of course, you can donate. All right. Some advice, some resources, um, some food stamps, Captain Crunch coupons, whatever it is that you have. But you can donate some nickels and dimes. Uh, just hit the cash app. That's dollar sign Professor Griff. Or you can go to my website, www.professorgriff.com dot me if you would like to donate and of course if you truly really sophisticated and you keeping track of every dollar dime whatever it is that you spend bitcoin uh whatever it is you can go right to paypal that's www.paypal.me forward slash um professor griff corp and you can donate that way let's get a few of the uh, business bit of the business out of the way uh let me share my screen with everyone here right here all right on sale right now is the resurrection formula There's limited qualities available family all right um starting october 15th limited bottles so get your order in now all right it's a resurrection 
formulas, the resurrection formula. And brothers, if you do not know what that means, lean right on over and tap your mate and just ask her, well, what is the res what is the resurrection? <laughs> what is the resurrection formula? <laughs> All right. <laughs> For optimal results, the tonic is meant to be taken daily. All right. It's a male tonic. All right. We would go deeper into this probably a little bit later on in the show. We'll kind of touch on some things. All right. But you can go to www.seriousmindsinstitute and the description for it is right there where you can read everything that's in it. All right. And what it's actually good for. All right. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease that you may have. All right. Please consult your physician if you have any health concerns before taking this product. This is a resurrection formula. Uh, for that 3.30 to 5.30 in the morning kind of thing, thing. All right? Got you. And I hope you got me. All right. All right. Opposite of that, not opposite of that, right along with that, it's the Serious Minds Brain Tonic. All right? The Serious Minds Brain Tonic. All right? The Brain Tonic was created to help sharpen the mind, protecting cells, and increasing neurotransmitters associated with learning and memory. All right? The Serious Minds Brain Tonic. Gets you some nice natural juice, drop a full, shake it up, go for it, all right? Keep it in your system, make it happen. Serious Minds Brain Tonic, all right? And of course, my good brother, Mr. Earl Hold at www.headquartersstudio.com, uh, H-D-Q-T-R-Z.com, Headquarters Mastering Studios, all right? All right, that's Mr. Earl Holder. You can call him today at 404-643-8213, www.headquarters.com. All right, and please support Sankofa University out of Dallas, Texas. That's Sankofa University out of Dallas, Texas. All right, make sure we show this brother some love and some support. All right. All right, and as I uh, said, we're having a guest on tonight, and this is kind of rare because a lot of people just kind of shy away from Professor Griff. I don't know why. But anyway, we got our good brother, Dr. Mawata Ashby, coming up in a few seconds. So just kind of sit tight, family. Uh, what I need everyone to do right now is screenshot this particular flyer. Some valuable information on his websites right below his picture right there. Some other stuff that we're going to get into tonight. All right. All right. Hold on one second, family. Let me get black with you. All right. All right. I want to give a special shout out to Quan. Thank you for your support, Quan, and definitely all the things um, that you do uh, to make this show uh, to make this show happen. Really appreciate it, and all the supporters that have been there to support Serious Minds. All right. To support serious minds and i really appreciate everyone and once again thanks for all of the uh the condolences that everyone has sent not only on serious minds but outside of this particular platform thank y'all very much and also salute um salute to you Quan definitely all the hard work that you do all right uh we hope and pray that you get just a little bit taller uh anyway in the meantime um in between time <laughs> We're going to make this happen with our good brother. So hopefully there's no issues. Hopefully the trolls, matter of fact, the trolls are going to be on deck. So let's not worry about them. Let's focus on the bit of business that we have to take care of. So let me find my brother, add him to the stream um, so we can have this particular dialogue. All right. Hold on one second. Let me see if I got my good brother on. Hold on. Let me put on some headphones. I want to be able to make sure I hear every word you have to say, good brother. 
I, 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 do you hear my voice? <laughs> uh, yes, indeed, I can hear you. Oh, okay, and wow, that sounds beautiful. I can hear your voice. Now, why can't I have a backdrop like that, bro? Can you help your brother out? <laughs> but anyway, how you doing this evening? Very well, very well. Okay, first of all, I want to give thanks to everyone that's a part of your team because they have been on it. My phone ain't never blew up that much. <laughs> but it shows you that they it shows you that they're on it. You got some good brothers and sisters um uh, working with you. Um tonight is going to not going to be the traditional kind of interview because I ho hope you can bear with me and rock with me just for a minute. My audience um, they're all over the place. They're from 1880, young, dumb, blind, crippled, crazy, some smart, intelligent, some are just off the Richter scale, some operate on different planets, some from the underground, some didn't quite get it yet, but most of us are there. Is that cool? All right. All right. All right. Cool. Um, excuse me talking fast. I'm from New York. I'm sure you've, you're familiar with New Yorkers, right? Yes. Yes. I was all born right, there. Cool. All right. So, um, brothers, sisters, family, serious minds, family. This is the good Dr. Mawata Ashby. Rather than reading the brother's extensive bio, I'd rather have a dialogue all right, inside of inside of the bio. All right. Um this brother, if he was to if you was to meet him on the bus stop and you only had a few seconds to dialogue and exchange business cards, good doctor. What would you pass on if they say, well, you know, how are you doing? A lot of times when we ask people, like, so who are you? Like, what what, what do you do? All right? A lot of times when we ask who are you, people tell us what they do. When we ask people what they do and they say, well, I'm a doctor of so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. All right. So real brief so we can lay the foundation to this. Who is Dr. Mawata Ashby? All right. That's a good, a good question, I guess, to start with. Dr. Mawata Ashby is foremost a spiritualist, secondly, a philosopher, and next, uh, shall we say, a professor, a teacher. But all those are, are titles of the world. Mm. Um, what Ashby is really an Asar, and Asar is the soul. It's our universal soul, our spirit being. Uh, if, I, if I was to meet someone uh, in the, uh, uh, on the bus or something like that, it, it would not be enough time to impart <laughs> you know, the, the depth of what that really means. But uh, I would hope that my countenance, my mm. energy, my feeling uh, would impart something higher that they could, could maybe uh, say, at least take away, hey, wow, this, this dude was, you know, I really felt something when I met this person that I don't know what it is and everything. But so that, that's, how, that's how I would answer that question. Okay. And then they said, okay, beautiful meeting you, brother. I got to go to work, whatever, whatever, whatever. But once again, what is it that you do? A philosopher, a researcher of comedic philosophy and wisdom, <laughs> history, uh, comedic yoga. Uh, and and what, what, what I would do, though, after that, that brief uh, statement, I, was, I would give them uh, a flyer or a card and tell them to come to our class. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing that needs to be done. Because th this... Yeah, like I say, this is it, it's not enough time. Our, our philosophy has to be developed, has to be cultivated. And so that's how I would answer that question. And if the young brother or young brother said to you, it's like, where can I begin? Where, where, okay. what, what point? What, what, yeah, where, where can I be? What's my reference point in order for to me to move towards, you know, that, 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 that this ultimate goal where, where you are? Where, what do I do? What's my reference point? Well, one, one, I think, good reference point would be to go to your local bookstore or Amazon, if, if that's what you're, you do, and pick up our, one of our main books, which is Egyptian Yoga. And next after that, uh, you can go to EgyptianYoga.com for more information. And, mm -hmm. and if you really want to get forward from there, go to Kemet University, uh, Egyptian Mystery School, uh, KemetUniversity.com. And that's where we have our school. And right. that's where I, where I really... I really lay down uh, the, the the deeper thoughts and the philosophy and the study. It was founded in, in its current state in uh, 2014, and so we've been going. Uh, it's been developing for six years, and we have many students. And 
So, because the the Egyptian mysteries, the philosophy is really a, an inner thing, and it mm -hmm. has to be treated with respect and with care. Right. It's not something that can be, because you can see how many people have uh, uh, go to a bookstore and get many books and many read the Book of the Dead, but do you really understand what the meaning is? Mm -hmm. I know I didn't understand it when I first got a hold of it, uh, you know, decades ago, um, and I had to do enter into deeper studies, and also I had to to work with uh, spiritual teachers, spiritual masters as well. Okay. Um, so just as a, as a, uh, we're continuing to lay, to lay the base, um, where did Dr. Mawata Ashby begin? What was that thing that sparked Mawata Ashby to begin this journey down this path? No, we can say in this lifetime, it was uh, frustration. Mm. And and this this is the really the the foundation of true spiritual life: frustration, pain, sorrow, failure, uh, unhappiness. Uh, all all of those. You know, it's it's it, it's in, it, even in our proverbs. It's a way that life, uh, you know, kind of lights a fire under the personality, under the ego personality, so so that it will start to search and see why is this pain there why is this trouble there and what should i what do i need to do uh, in order to relieve that that sorrow relieve that pain uh, and uh, the the you know one of the the critical ways that our ancestors our spiritual ancestors did that was through myth and mm -hmm. the comedic word for myth is uh, matanu and there, there have been many uh, good scholars uh, of mythology, uh, such as Joseph Campbell. But um, mythology is it's really a, the language of the soul uh, that our ancestors discovered and laid down for us so that we could understand the nature of life, the purpose of life, mm -hmm. where we are on that spiritual journey moving towards enlightenment and immortality. That's, that's what the myth is supposed to be. So in modern culture, the myth is considered, or in this modern culture, Western culture, myth is considered to be a imagination, mm. a, a, a lie even. Right. Uh, and you say, oh, that's a myth. You know, that, that's nothing. That's how people use it. But the, the original term and the original concept is much higher than that. Mm. Myth leads to or opens up mythic philosophy, mythic wisdom, and that leads to to the mysteries. Okay. Give us, a, go ahead. give us a a myth that we can sink our teeth in that this Western world mindset can wrap its mind around and, and, and understand. Can you give us one that's already out there? Sure. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the the myth of, of Asar. Asar, Asad, and Heru. Okay. Uh, Asar, Osiris, mm -hmm. Aset, Isis, right. and Heru, Horus. So this is this is the the first human king of ancient Egypt, right? And he was a wonderful king, beloved. Uh, so, but one person didn't like him too much, and that was his his brother. His brother's name is Seth, and Seth uh, tried to kill him. Mm -hmm. And then Aset, Isis, came by, revived him. And was able to conceive an heir, right? Which is Horus, and Horus is the one who redeemed. He made a challenge to Seth. So, and this challenge was successful. Uh, Horus redeemed his father. His father went to to heaven and became a, a king in the netherworld. And Horus became the king on in time and space on Earth in Egypt. Mm. And he unseated Seth. Right. So if people are familiar with the the, the the teaching of Hamlet, if people are, are familiar with the teaching of Star Wars, mm. if people are familiar with the teaching of the, um, the Lion King, all these have the, the same basic thing. You have a king, you have the king who was killed by the brother, essentially. Right. <laughs> uh, then uh, you have the son who grows up and he, he becomes the new king. He, he's a challenger and it turns out that underneath the myth is the understanding that this is the story of the soul. Mm. And our soul has, 
incarnated in this life. And it has been, and we, and pre, our soul awareness, our immortal awareness, our transcendental awareness, our universal awareness is not with most people. Otherwise you would be called an enlightened being. And that's the term is ma, uh, makeru. Uh, you, you have yeah, enter the mysteries, the shatal and enter mysteries. Right. So, uh, but a person who has not achieved that, they are walking around as if disintegrated. And that's what Set tried to do to Asar. He tried to dismember him. And what it is is that uh, you, you, a, a person's ego, their ideas, their mentality about who they are, about what life is supposed to be, uh, all that is disintegrated. Right. And so people don't know uh, what the truth is. So uh, an associated philosophy to the matanu, to the myth, is ma. Mm. The ma is very simply the truth, but the abiding truth. Okay. There, there are essentially two kinds of truth. And the, the matian injunction says there are two truths. And one is the reality, one is the, the delusion. One is righteousness, one is unrighteousness. Mm. And the, the truth that leads to the abiding reality of the universal nature of the soul, that truth is the absolute truth. Anything else is a conditional or situational or relative truth. Mm. And people have come to believe in rel relative truths. And therefore, according to the Mott wisdom, they are believing in a lie, they are believing in an untruth, and that leads to insanity. Mm. And so you're either sane or insane. And the, the insanity that has developed in our culture presently is of the nature of a person who lives by perpetual and deepening delusion. Right. And you know, you can look outside uh, everywhere, uh, black, white, uh, Latino, everybody thinks that, that they know what the truth is, but er really they're believing in their own individual or egoistic truths. Mm -hmm. And therefore, be, having been inculcated with the society that you are value and you and your you with your ideas and your truths that you are that, that you are are capable and worthy to have those truths. So so everybody's truth is butting up against everybody else's truth. Right. And so you're you, you're living by a delusion. You're also since you you don't know really what the truth is, you have failure in your life, and you blame that on not having enough faith right or having not having a faith in the right person so you're going to vote for a, a president who's going to save you you're going to you're going to you know go to a movie of a movie star who's who's going to who's going to come and save you or or a rich person who's going to come and be the savior right. instead of saving oneself and that's what the myth teaches us to be able to do to become our own mm. peru spiritual aspiration that grows and that reaches to the heights of enlightenment right that we can master uh, supplant our own egoism mm -hmm. and become the masters of our powers. Right. That's the that's the other thing that that we don't uh, that we don't do is that we we have the myth tells us about our powers. They call cosmic forces or netudu, and if we are able to grow to discover those, uh, we can have immense power, and not just uh, talking physically. That the mind is the most powerful instrument. And if we were able to do that, then we would we would not be fighting uh, or wondering how we can be free or how, right. how can we, right. we succeed in the struggle, and we would not be butting up heads heads uh, against each other. Right. We'd be able to communicate and cooperate, and succeed and prevail. Okay, so the idea of uh, yoga, I, I, I bumped into it, ran into it, stepped over it. <laughs> And it, it said, excuse me a few times, I'll let it by. So when I stopped it and had a conversation with it and tried to interact with it, it was introduced to me years ago. Um, and I just thought it was something physical that you do, almost like, you know, exercise. And then I started meeting yogis and found out there was a lot different. Then I married one and, she, and she, she, she began to dialogue about the journey of the self through the self back to the self. And she says, no, yoga is not just exercise. I mean, you can go through asanas and different things, but so this yoga is a lot deeper. 
My question to you is, so what is yoga? But then again, what is Egyptian or comedic yoga? And is there a difference? Okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me backtrack and start with uh, yoga as, as it is known in the West uh, is really a, a degraded co-optation mm. of, of Indian uh, yoga primarily. And it's like a, a yoga journal syndrome that, that I used to think about. That it's been commercialized. And uh, it's interesting, um, uh, Julia Roberts uh, once said that she doesn't want yoga to change her life. She just wants it to change her butt. <laughs> and, and, and that's that that's, <laughs> gives you the symbol of the whole, <laughs> the whole cultural view of what yoga is supposed to be. And uh, one of the, the children or the grandchild of the, one of the people who originally brought yoga to the West in the early 20th century uh, said that, that uh, they wish that, that, it, that, they, they, that their father or their parent had never brought it over because of what has been done, because mm. of the co-optation uh, of the yoga in the West. So in, indeed, uh, yoga was actually never, originally it, it was not um, intended to be a physical practice, mm. even in, in India. Uh, that became uh, an adjunct. The, the real yogic wisdom, and the, by the way, the, the comedic term is Sema. Say that once again, Sema? Sema, S-E-M-A. Okay. Uh, so Sema Tawi, that, that's translated directly means uh, Egyptian yoga. And that term actually exists in the scriptures. Okay. So the, the concept of, of yoga uh, is to, or Sema, is to unite the two uh, opposite psyches or psychic aspects, shall we say. And I discussed those earlier, those are Heru and Set. So Set is, is the ego that tries to disintegrate the soul and Heru is the force that redeems. And so you're trying to, to unite those two forces or actually reconcile them, I think is a better word. And when so when they're reconciled, Heru takes his proper place as the higher self, mm. mastering over the personality. He has reintegrated and redeemed the soul along with his, his mother, I said. Mm -hmm. And Set, the ego, takes its proper place also because your ego has, you know, your personality, your ego is not who you are, it's what you are. Mm -hmm. So when that personality, your ego, takes its proper place, that is not the true you, that's the instrument that the true you uses to have experiences in time and space. Right. To get, to move through the mythic journey, the, what Joseph Campbell would call the mythic uh, hero's journey. So that is what uh, the yoga, the Sema is supposed to be. And you do that by studying the myth and then by living the myth. And uh, you live the myth in two ways, two ways that we can talk about right now. One of them is in your life by learning the philosophy, applying the Malkin wisdom, becoming a righteous person, right? growing in ethical conscience. And then uh, that's your externalized life, your ex exoteric experience. Then you have an inner life. Then that's when you, when you turn off the TV and you go in, you do your meditation, uh, you do your chant, et cetera, et cetera. You do your fasting. And also you do special, special ritual practices and even going to temple, uh, but also what we call Kanum Nefer, which is the, the group study of the teaching. And that's what we do in the Kemen University. Right. So that's supposed to be the, the, the best way to go. And the problem is that people don't know about that and they have come to be inculcated with and socialized to and normalized to the dysfunction of modern society, which we can see is moving in greater and greater measure towards self-destruction. Right, right. You you mentioned the, um, uh, briefly mentioned the individuals that brought it to the West, yoga to the West. So the codification of yoga, a lot of people would think that it was codified there in India. Was it we, black people from uh, the, from Africa and the diaspora that codified it, or was it someone else that brought it to Africa and then brought it to the West? Can you give us an idea? Right. 
So there, there is a, a, a researcher and professor by the name of Moada Ashby who wrote a, a, a humongous book called African Origins <laughs> of Civilization and philosophy. philosophy. And in the, the, uh, the third section of that book, uh, the, which is called uh, uh, Egypt and India, mm. uh, that is where the proofs and the references are all available for anyone to see. Uh, showing how the the uh, the yoga concept and philosophy and even the postures were present already in Kemet thousands of years before uh, they they were developed in India and also there was contact between ancient India and Egypt and so we have all the elements uh, to demonstrate uh, that there was a continuity of the culture from Kemet to India and so that that's that's uh, demonstrated in the uh, in the book. And there, there are dozens, hundreds of correlations uh, in, uh, you know, be, between the two, showing uh, the uh, the original philosophy and how it it developed and how it was transmitted and how it how it uh, is found in in India. And uh, uh, one of the you asked about the differences. One of the the main differences is the the aspect of iconography. And uh, I, I enjoyed your. Your opening iconography there in your okay. your, your program, <laughs> all of the the comedic <laughs> symbols, <Yeah. laughs> and uh, so there, that's it, it, it's important to understand that the the hieroglyphic language itself, uh, the the feeling uh, and the the measurements even of the temples, the forms of the iconography, uh, they have special effect on the human psyche uh, and and those are different uh, from the indian uh, however i would say that that at the heart uh, that there is there they're really you know pointing to the same underlying you know supreme reality the manifestation uh, you know in terms of the external aspects and things of that nature so it depends on on a person's feeling some people like indian culture and indian iconography and some people like african and uh, but of course, uh, the the African uh, occurs as you said before or earlier, uh, and also it has a, a special kind of, of psychic presentation. Uh, I'm really struggling to find the right word for that. But when you look at the visuals, the measurements of the temple, the measurements of the postures of the uh, uh, of the the personalities, the gods and goddesses in their relationship with the royal person, you know, the king or queen, uh, on the panels of the temple, uh, those have a special effect on the personality. Okay. Why is it that so many people try to separate and in their way of approaching certain ancient ideas tend to separate Africa from Egypt and, and tend to separate Egypt or Egyptian from comedic. Can you can we can you help us kind of put that back in line so so when we do approach some of these concepts, we understand its African origins and we we can understand its proper place on on on, on in a timeline. Right. So uh, other scholars have done this kind of work in this area, such as Cheikh Ante Diop, Ivan Ivan Van Sertima. Chester Williams and others, and, and I did uh, a review of that work and, and uh, hopefully added a few things in our African Origins Volume 1. And uh, essentially, uh, but also I, I should mention uh, Martin Vernal. He's a, a, a European author uh, as well. And the, the factor is that the, and also wrote uh, along with the African Origins Volume 1, uh, a little book called uh, Black Ancient Egyptians, uh, showing how uh, the the original inhabitants of the land of Kemet, ancient mm -hmm. Egypt, uh, were actually uh, Nubian-looking African peoples, and over time they they mixed with uh, people from the Middle East, so that the hue uh, of the color of the people changed, and then in the final period they mixed with uh, Greeks and Romans, mm -hmm. and so what uh, what we have all been able to show is that there is a bias, uh, or there has been a bias, or was a bias in uh, 
Egyptologists uh, looking at the later period and trying to extrapolate from there and say, well, everybody looks like this who is in Egypt because this, these are the ones that we see now. Right. Uh, but you go to the tombs and you can see evidences uh, otherwise. Uh, you can go to the to the temples, et cetera, and you can see evidences of otherwise, especially in naturalistic uh, imagery. Naturalistic mm -hmm. is the depictions on how people actually looked as opposed to idealistic, uh, which is relates to a, a spiritual ideal for everyone to emulate. How important is it right now for the average person that may see this? How important is it to get uh, knowledge of self, to know thyself? Critical. <laughs> I mean, I mean, heart attack critical, like pumping your chest critical on your deathbed critical, like give me some degree what critical. Right. Like. right. I, I would agree with all those, all the above. And, and also uh, insanity critical. Mm. And uh, remember what I said before that uh, it, our own philosophy Ma, says that you're either following the, 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 the road of righteousness and truth or you're following on righteousness and delusion. Mm. That's what I said before. If you're following, if you're not following a, 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 an abiding truth, you're following a relative truth. And a relative truth is is if you have, uh, you know, a, a law in a particular country that says you can't do such and such, but that is an immoral law, then that is against universal law. That's against abiding truth. That's that's only a relative. Law, you may have to follow that to survive so they won't shoot you or kill you or something like that, but that's mm -hmm. not a, you're not doing it because that's true. If you if you believe in that as the truth, then you're following a delusion and that is mm -hmm. going to lead to to mayhem. It's gonna to lead to a person right. eating the wrong things, uh, having wrong relationships and thinking the wrong things, leading themselves to those heart attacks, leading themselves to conflicts uh, that are going to end up getting them killed or uh, getting them, uh, allowing themselves to be conscripted into a war that's really a fi fighting a war for the power elite, the the rich, uh, you know, to to control, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's against uh, mod wisdom. And I wrote a book, well, a couple of books on that subject. One of them is mod versus fascism. And uh, that that was you know one of the, uh, mm -hmm. the topics that relate to that and collapse of civilization. So that so it's critical. So if yeah. if we don't have that as as individuals, it is self-destructive. If we don't have it as a culture, as a society, it's self-destructive in a cultural level. Right. And that's where where people are easily manipulated, miseducated, uh, deluded, and that perpetuates through a person's life, uh, even onto their death. So that what that means is that their life was really not meaningful because they were following a delusion. And it's, it seems, sounds like a hard thing to say, but mm -hmm. that is the, the suffering that a person can lead themselves to, uh, basically a wasted life. Mm -hmm. Now, in accordance with our, I should, should not leave it there, in accordance with our, our mythic wisdom, there is a, in the Purim Peru, the Book of the Dead, uh, there is the wisdom of Uhemank. And Uhemank means to live again. Mm. And so there is the conception that that uh, you know, uh, the, the, like the, the idea in Western culture that you're going to die and you only have one lifetime. You came into existence. Right. You're going to go out of existence, and, or you're going to go to hell for eternity. You're going to go to heaven for eternity. We right. don't have that. Mm. That's that's not the, the 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 view, and our view is not based on faith. We don't have faith-based religion, in in Kemet. Uh, you know, we have Shetal Netter, which is Egyptian mysteries. And the Shetal Netter means that one is going to reveal the mystery of existence. And that's the end of the myth, of the mythic journey. Right. And when that happens, then one has discovered abiding truth. One does not need faith. One does not need uh, right, right, right. trust anyone. Uh, you don't need uh, uh, sages or teachers or anything once you get to that level. But if you do not get to that level, then you can be abused, you can be used, uh, you can, and so I meant literally, uh, you lead yourself to a situation where you're eating junk food, you, eat, you get your heart attack, you're eating meat, 
uh, you know, the whole thing of doing drugs. Uh, you know, you, you have your strokes and everything else that can happen. Uh, but le leading a, a meaningless life, you know, walk, you know, going walking around as as an animal instead of a human, mm. that is the a person like that is not even capable of reaching to the level of of a mythic teaching, and that's the lowest level of of spiritual of a viable spiritual life. And the the myth of the West uh, basically tells you that uh, you know God created the world and God created you, and you're going to die, and and if you're good, you're going to go to heaven, and all that kind of thing. But uh, that doesn't take into account the the depth of the human personality, right. the unconscious mind, right. and everything that makes a person what they are, what they're manifesting, and how they think, how they feel, how they act, and how they're going to lead themselves either to delusion and perdition or to their own salvation and enlightenment and immortality. And all that you just gave us, and this is just a personal question of mine, um, can the English language provide enough to carry the weight of some of these concepts uh, when we're talking about transmutation and when we're talking about uh, translating even the glyphs, the hieroglyphs into something that we can readily use as we begin to unlearn some of these things that have been put on us and then to be begin to learn some of the things that we need to learn. Um, can the English language do that or is the English language a hindrance? I, I would not consider it a, a hindrance. Uh, but I would consider it uh, in, in, insufficient. What I mean by that is that you need more. And if, really, any language is sufficient to convey the, the the foundations of the philosophy and wisdom. But you have to learn the mindset, and that comes from from having uh, like you know you, you have the ankh behind you. Right. When, when a person is looking at you, that's psychically having an effect. If you have the regular Christian cross, it, it, there's different energy in that. There's different feeling, et cetera, et cetera. So you need you need more than that, and uh, uh, along with with that, it, so there are three things that you need. And what one of them is a viable philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, with the wisdom and the mysteries that the, 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 you know, to lead a person, and then you need a viable teacher, someone who knows the teaching, someone who is conversant and who uh, who has actually tread the path that the myth is is talking about and then you need a a viable student someone who has purified themselves by living an ethical life and that's mod philosophy and then that makes them sufficiently purified so that they can be viable students disciples for the teaching to learn it and to grow with it so the English, or really any language, can be a, a foundation or starting point, as long as the philosophy is explained, uh, you know, within the confines of the language. And then you do studies of hieroglyph, then you do studies of the temple wisdom, and then you you immerse yourself in that uh, divine computer. And once a person has been has purified themselves, you become uh, like the the wetware that can plug into that computer and understand the software that, that that is written in the temples. And then you start thinking in a different way. You start feeling in a different way, start acting in a different way. And eventually you end up being a higher aspect of yourself. Right. Okay. So, and I'm, I'll just ask this. I'm not, I'm not being antagonistic here. <laughs> Do I have to learn? Meduneta in order to activate some of these higher principles inside of the self, in order to activate, to set these things in motion. I'm sure I can't keep calling myself Dwayne Williams and <laughs> Margaret <laughs> Margaret Culpepper. Do I have to change my name? Should I? What do I have to? I mean, the vibration of the some of the terms and words in English don't even just sit right with me. You understand what I'm saying? Like when I call people. 
uh, you know, it bothers me when people say hi, hello. I'm like, yeah, you're setting the tone for the conversation. Or people, when they call, they just start talking. They never give a greeting at all. I mean, how, how, how does it work? Is it important to have a way to handle this kind of knowledge? I agree. I definitely agree. I, I think it's, uh, it, it's it's definitely something, especially it's, it's interesting because we have um, people who come to us uh, who have come to us in the past. They come from from the m many different groups, uh, from Muslim groups, from uh, and they, they have, you know, a, a name uh, like uh, uh, Muhammad. So you come to to you know to with a name like Muhammad, which which is really indicating a different kind of mindset, a different kind of energy, a different kind of culture, a different kind of mythic mythic uh, sensibility. Uh, and then you want to to come to a class to learn about Asar, Asad, Heru, uh, et, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's going to be uh, at some point a cognitive dissonance that comes in, and that's where that's actually what we were talking about earlier. If a person is living by truth, then if you're training yourself to live by truth, when a cognitive dissonance situation comes, you're going to make the right choice. You're going to make the choice of truth. If a person is weak, they will make the, the choice of unrighteousness and delusion. They're going to push out away the truth, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So indeed, part of, of this transformation uh, needs to be, like I said before, having a different mindset, a different feeling, a different action. And that part of that is is in, in your how you look. And look look at your your vestment that you're wearing right now. Look, look at my you know my uh, uh, symbolism that I wear right now, the, mm -hmm. the, the sash of the priest, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and and all these are important because what what you're using with your speech refers to your unconscious. And if you if you say Muhammad 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 Muhammad, or if you say uh, Asara said Asara said, you're having a different direction. And if your direction is not a righteous direction, if your direction is towards a delusion, uh, that is going to lead you down the path of perdition, like we said before. So I, I think definitely you don't have to to be uh, fluent, uh, but uh, uh, like when we greet, we, we have a whole set of basic words that we use. You know, one you mentioned greetings earlier. Uh, that'll be uja, and uh, thank you, dua. Uh, uh, no, on, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that brings us to a different sensibility. When we meet each other, we don't say brother and sister, we say sen senti, uh, you know, things of that nature. That brings you to a different sensibility, a, a different, and, and it, it's something that actually uh, operates in the realm of, of the, the medu, the, the medu, of, you know, which is the speech. And if you are are bringing your speech closer to netter, then we call it shetau, well, medu netter, and that is divine speech, as opposed to mundane speech of the world, and and that is something to be done, uh, re really all the time, perennially, as much as possible. Right, right, right. And that will help the spiritual evolution. Right. So um, I heard you were undertaking this uh, special project relating to the uh, the Asarian resurrection myth um, to be presented at the 2020 Netherin conference. Is that is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Can you give mm -hmm. us an idea of what that is? Um, yeah, just give us an idea what, what, what that is. Yeah, that is a a major project that I have that I have uh, taken on. And uh, basically, uh, what most people know about the story of Osiris, Isis, and Horus, Osiris and Heru, uh, they know from translations done by, by Western Egyptologists, primarily, uh, or they, they know it from, from children's stories or things of that nature, uh, and which are summaries uh, of of what these people have surmised about the teaching, what it relates to, uh, and, and what the events of it, et cetera, et cetera. What I've am working on is that I'm trying to do a a translation of the texts that contain that the ones that that, that have been 
come down to us, the ancient Egyptian text, the hieroglyphic text itself, that has come down, <clears throat> excuse me, that has come down to us, that relates the story of Asara said in Heru. And so what I'm doing is I'm combining those texts with uh, some of the sections of the temples that are relevant. And we're gonna pre present uh, like a, a coherent uh, narrative based on the original text, not, not on uh, surmising or basing it uh, uh, primarily on uh, Greek writers, classical writers like Plutarch. Uh, although uh, one of the issues is that um, the whole myth is, is not contained in the hieroglyphic text. It's more like legendary. Uh, so that's why uh, you know some of the the uh, writings from the the, uh, the 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 other writers are used right. you know to fill in the gaps mm -hmm. but we are going to take uh, what is left of the hieroglyphic text which is pretty extensive uh, and we're going to put it together and do a presentation uh, at at the the uh, conference and probably it's so long it's probably the the longest um, work that I've done because uh, I do this kind of thing for for the conferences, and actually, then I end up publishing it the following year. Right. Uh, so this is the longest. Uh, so we'll probably present sections of it, and then we'll present the whole thing in in the final book. And that and that's that's uh, what that uh, what that project is all about. Okay. Um. Normally, I would take a break right here and let the family know that we're going to be wrapping this up but if you have a few minutes i have a few minutes is that cool sure sure go ahead. all right um a few more questions i want to ask but i'm not going to take the break what i'm going to do for at least one minute is give the floor to you so you can just let people know some of the things you have going on and please do me a favor some people have sent me a couple of text messages and said ask the brother can he recommend three of his 60 books <laughs> that people can get right now to just set them on that path. Now, I don't know individuals' paths. You're called to whatever path you're called to. I'm just saying three books that they could get right now to say, I have to read these three books in order to continue my work and do what I'm going. If you could do that for a few minutes, I gotta run and get a scroll that I wanna show you and ask some questions about this scroll. Is that cool? All right, go ahead. All right, the floor is yours. Give me one second. You, you could begin to tell us about the three. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So, right. so we have the uh, the comedic conference, and the dates are December 30th through uh, January 3rd. <coughs> and the, the mythic theme, as you just discussed, was going to be the presentation of the Asaran resurrection myth uh, from the original hieroglyphic texts and the translations that, that I'm going to be, or that I am working on, some direct translations, original translations. And uh, for information on that, natarianconference at gmail.com or uh, call 954-599-3850. Uh, that's uh, natarianconference at uh, gmail.com or 954-599-3850. And as far as the, um, and, and the, online, the ongoing classes at Kim University. Some, some other programs we have going on, and I'll get to, to the books that you asked about, uh, is that next year there's going to be a, a trip to Kemet. And uh, that is, is being conducted by uh, my spiritual partner, uh, Dr. Karen Ja Ashby. And that is going to be, uh, I believe, in September. I'm not, not sure. Okay, yes, September 5th to the 17th, yes. Uh, so I wanted to to mention that, and uh, you can go to Kemet Mystic Tours at gmail.com for more information on that, or EgyptianYoga.com trip to Egypt 2021, uh, and uh, so I think that was that's all the announcements. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, like I said before, that the classes Kemet University, EgyptianMysteries.org or KemetUniversity.com. About the books, I think um, possibly the the best books to start with are Egyptian Yoga, mm -hmm. Volume One, and that that's like an all around foundational book that gives an a, an insight into 
what the comedic teaching is, how it relates to other spiritual systems of the world, mm -hmm. uh, how it relates to Christianity, Hinduism, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it talks about the universality of, of the human being. And then going from there, if you want to go more into the comedic wisdom, then uh, another book that, that should be next is uh, Egyptian Mysteries, Volume 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's part of a three-part series, but really it's, it's number one. The, the, the Volume 1 is the one that, that should be next. Along with that is uh, Comedic Diet. Mm. And that deals with uh, the diet for the mind, uh, the body, and the soul. Uh, and uh, another one that I could suggest is uh, Egyptian Yoga Postures of the Gods and Goddesses. And that talks about the, the physical uh, posture system of the ancient Egyptian postures. And so those would be kind of foundational books. And I think once people get to those, all, all those books have catalogs in the back of them and they have references so it will lead them kind of organically to which is the next book that they should read, you know, from there. Oh, okay. Uh, and along with that, uh, I guess one more is African origins. That's mm. that's foundational. That's from a historical uh, point of view. So I think those are good selections. Right. All right. So in my travels, I want to show you three different scrolls. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and. You know, I have I, I do have a few questions, but I'd rather show them to you, and you just kind of give me your your take. Uh, um, this is not a, a right or wrong, or should I or should I not, or whatever. Basically, what I'm showing you is scrolls, and how can I incorporate them? I had uh, I had designed. It took me eight months to design an alternative Black Studies course, and inside of the course, I put everything from aspects of what you're talking about, the concept of God and uh, knowing, knowing and understanding the self and, you know, I, everything from that right on to the riots, I mean, the riots and protests that are going on now. So everything in between so that we can get an idea of who we are, where we are, and all, we, all that we ought to be in this world's life. And um, I started, when I started doing research, I started pulling together all of the things that I had in my library. And, um, you know, opened up a cold, couple of boxes and uh, found these scrolls. Well, they were never lost, but. <laughs> okay, those, those are the, uh, it's, it's kind of a, of a history. Mm -hmm. And it's going from, uh, from Mesopotamia, I believe you have there on the top left. Mm -hmm. uh, coming down to the Greek period on the bottom right, the Greek, Greek, Greek and Roman period, is that? Right, 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 exactly. So could this fit into some of the things that you talk about in some of your, your, your books, like, for example, African origins? Would this be, can this accompany it? Can we, you know, how could we use this? And there's another one that's a little bit more, I think, something similar to that, but a little bit more intricate. Okay, Nile Valley Civilization. Uh huh. Right. Well, what 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 I would um, offhand, and I'm not being facetious about this at all. The one that you're holding in your hand now, that should come before everything that's in the other one. Oh, so this one should this one should come first. The one I'm holding, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. And the the one that the the first one that you held up, mm -hmm. uh, that one. Uh, the uh, the the start of it, the the Mesopotamian at the beginning. That's incorrect. Okay. We we have shown, we have demonstrated, and uh, the we have geological proofs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that have been, that have been this scientifically verified that ancient Egyptian civilization was the first high civilization before right. Mesopotamia. Right. And there are indications that the the ancient Egyptian language was a, a a proto Sinaitic uh, uh, base for for the uh, the the, the uh, Mesopotamian symbols and also the Greek symbols as well. So right. So that the so that one should start with Kemet and then Mesopotamia. Okay. And then everything else. All right. So let me show you this last one. Do me one favor. Have someone on your um, your family post up. Where can people donate? 
right, whether you got a cash app, PayPal, whether you accept food stamps, Captain Crunch coupons, Frosted Flakes, I don't know, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever kind of currency. Uh, can you just kind of have someone put that up on the screen so we could have the family and people that are watching this um, give donations if they would like to give donations, if that's possible? Okay, I think uh, uh, we have, um, there's something on our bookstore, egyptianyogabooks.com, a section for donation, or otherwise people can donate directly through PayPal to our, our email. Now, can you have yeah. someone type that in and send it to me so I can put it up on the screen while we continue to go over this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they'll do that. All right. But this is probably a more extensive one I, I received from a brother when I was in England some time ago. Um, okay, that's a little smaller, but... Um, okay. And this kind of starts off, with, it, it deals with the brain's hemispheres. The right hemisphere, left hemisphere, female and masculine vulture and cobra. Uh, female, female emotional spiritual awareness whole picture imagination color um dimensions and then it talks about masculine um uh, numbers analyzes things sequence list logic um and then the uh then it gets into this height idea of bc and uh what does bc this says bc is before christ Revolution. Right, right. okay uh, and then it kind of talks about the comedic cultural political time and this is roughly 52 it's probably about 5000 years of history that we're seeing right here okay now this one is it has too many uh, issues for me to be able to see and to evaluate so I would not be able to evaluate it oh okay but but I, I and I so I can't say anything specifically right. you know this uh, correct or not right. yet, but what what I would say is that one of the things, and again, I'm not putting this one down or at all or anything like that, is that uh, one of the things that that uh, I see a lot is that people who are well-meaning and trying to to organize and put put together an understanding, um, they, they they come up with many different configurations and sometimes overcomplicated, sometimes right. you know not. Uh, uh, taking certain things into, into account. M many people are not scholars, and I don't mean necessarily university indoctrinated scholars, but someone who has who has been uh, initiated into a, uh, understanding by someone who is righteous and someone who understands, someone who knows, uh, so that they can start, you know, they, they do a lot of things out of imagination, out of goodwill, but uh, so, you know, th that's all I could say. Uh, you know about that kind of thing. So I would need to look at it more closely. And okay. and uh, because what I said before, the 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 the, the Metra, the Egyptian mysteries, and the Matanu, the the mythic journey, mm -hmm. the, the Matanu Wat, the mythic journey, mythic path, uh, is actually we haven't been able to get into the the extent of the depths of the the the, the mystic psychology, the psycho spirituality of the teaching. Which has many intricacies, and talks about the the concept. I mean, we discussed about Indian yoga before, and they have the concept of karma. Uh, well, we have the concept of Aryu that was that that occurs uh, or earlier in Kemetic wisdom, Kemetic history, mm -hmm. that talks about how a person's psyche is affected by their actions, the whether the actions are righteous or whether the actions are unrighteous, right. like I said before, uh, and that all of that has to go in because the the mythic journey is as well about the energies of life like we said before the netteru and a human beings actions in life m manipulate cultivate certain mm -hmm. energies and uh, if a person is following like we said before a a misunderstood path or or a, a going down a, a path of delusion for whatever reason, or uh, something misconstrued, uh, and and this this is I think what people have to be careful about. I mean, you, you don't go to to you know for, you know, for heart surgery to uh, an auto mechanic, <laughs> but but you don't go to to heart surgery 
to a, a, a doctor who has been who has been inculcated with certain ideas and not taking into account, uh, like for instance, that it uses the same example. Uh, you have uh, Dean Ornish, who is a, considered an alternative doctor. He has proven that that most uh, patients do not need bypass surgery. They can do it through diet, through yoga, through yeah. meditation, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But the establishment refuses to accept that, and they continue the road of surgery and and uh, uh, you know the, the the statins and everything else that has been proven to be injurious. So you you want to know what the truth is, and if you are in the in the capacity of being sane by following truth, you're going to not give or sacrifice your life to a delusion or to deluded people. Right. And you're going to be able to make a better way for yourself. In right. fact, you're going to avoid having to go to surgery altogether. Right. <laughs> so that, that's that's what I'd say about that. Okay. Um, do you mind taking a few questions from the Serious Minds audience? Sure, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, no problem. Uh, let the people ask a few questions right now. In the meantime, between time, this is Professor Griff, Public Enemy, and I am on, uh, right here on Serious Minds RNTV, interviewing my good brother, Dr. Muwata Ashby. Out of his 60 books, I think me and my wife probably have about 10. I gotta wait till I get a couple of more food stamps and then I'm gonna get the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're 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 all you're wrong. You know, you have a long way to go because we're we're over like 75 books now. See, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, was, that was an old count. <laughs> I'm thinking 60, I got 10. <laughs> I thought I was doing good. <laughs> but the beautiful thing about it. Each one that I get, I want to make sure I get it under my belt before I kind of move on. And I'm just doing it in degrees. Yeah, it's not about quantity. It's about the quality. So if you get the right ones, the good ones, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, the concept, my question before, you know, we take questions from the family. Uh, the concept of uh, uh, God and devil, heaven and hell, right and wrong. Is there a concept of the devil in what you teach in, in, in your body of work? On. On means means no, means negative. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what would that, 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 that entity be that negative all yeah, what would that entity be? What what would we substitute the devil for? Right, remembering what we what we talked about before, the path of my right, uh, right. righteousness or unrighteousness. Oh, okay. Uh, truth or delusion. So right. we have a, a remember we talked about the the, the myth. Mm -hmm. yeah, we had uh, Asar instead of Heru, and then we had his brother Set, who became jealous and tried to to kill Asar by dismembering him, and then they put him back together. So that is right. the putting back together of our conscious awareness okay. of our higher right. self. Right. Someone taught so, me that concept through, through through the word remember, but it's hard for me, and this is just personal. It's hard for me to kind of grasp some of these things having to use this language i feel confined um when i when i was really truly seriously thinking about studying a different language i was trying to figure out okay do i have to go back to to these same people to get this wisdom to get this knowledge um where are those teachers like yourself where are they at where do we find them where are those where can i get initiated in 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 in, in what you're doing and these brothers want to go down this path but is this readily available to us? I think the, the truth of that, the answer to that question is no, it, it is not readily available. It's, mm. it's only available to those who are ready for it. You know, when, when uh, the ears are ready, you know, the, the wisdom is there to speak into them. And the, the, the problem is that when a person is deluded, they will discount like you you mentioned that you and, and i did too when i was younger i saw people doing yoga but you're taught to think that they're crazy or they're you know they're hippies or there's something strange about them or whatever right, right, right. So you you know you, because you want to live and you want to be in the world and you want to you know and you think you know what life is all about right but if what if life knocks you around a little bit and that makes you just think wait a minute i'm <laughs> i'm getting older and i'm i messed up here let me ask some questions but if, if a person is mature to that level, then they can start growing. If they're not, 
they'll say, oh, I don't have enough faith. I have to do, do some more, some more uh, prayer and I have to have more faith and, and I have to go, you know, more to the church or the, or the, the mosque or something like that. Then that is going to be their faith. They're going to be caught up in that for life. And maybe in their next life, they will have a better chance once that, what we call are you, you know, karma is, is uh, worn off. Uh, you know, to that extent. So it, it is not, and it was never meant to be available uh, uh, openly because uh, this is one thing the Bible says that I will agree with, that uh, beware of casting pearls before swine, right? Because they'll trample it as they turn on you. You're trying to to save people, help people, and they're going to blame you or or accuse you or attack you because they can't handle the cognitive dissonance of their own delusion. So a person cannot be helped if they're in a deluded state right. and if they themselves are supporting their own delusion. And what a, a delusion, uh, it, I would say in modern times, is believing that a corrupt government, a, a corrupt corporate, cor corporatocracy, oligarchy, can be that you can vote somebody that's going to help you in this kind right. of corrupt system. That, that's a delusion. Right, exactly. And continue to believe that, that somehow having hope in, in a delusion is going to, to lead you to your salvation. That is, of course, uh, uh, the, the path of insanity. Right. And so one needs to grow to become one's own spiritual savior. And that's what the, the true mysteries help one to do. And the kinetic mysteries are one. There are other mysteries on the world who are authentic also. Right. But we because it resonates with us. Uh, this is why we follow this particular path. Right. Someone has a question. They said, does Dr. Mawata Ashby believe? And then I guess there must have been a miss. And then it says, ask him, is Jesus really coming back? I feel bar embarrassed by asking that, but it's what the person asked me to ask you. Do you believe? Well, you know, Dr. Mawata Ashby wrote a book uh, called uh, Mystical Journey from Jesus to Christ. Mm. And, and that book uh, talks about the origins of the Christian myth in the Assyrian resurrection. That's the myth mm -hmm. that we're talking about, the Osiris, the, the, you know, the, the concept of resurrection, the concept of a Eucharist, concept of, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, angels, uh, uh, saints, et cetera, et cetera, concept of salvation, et cetera, et cetera. These are all originated in ancient Egypt. And even the Bible tells us that the, you know, Jesus and Mary, they, they went into Egypt for to save themselves, uh, you know, when they needed to. Also, the, the Jews went into Egypt. Uh, it, so this is where it all came from. It, it, the, the, the foundations of the Christian teaching came from the ancient Egyptian myth of the Siren resurrection. And this is not a bodily resurrection we're talking about. This is a resurrection of the soul to its tr the knowledge of its true identity, right. which is immortal and eternal. And that goes beyond a bodily existence. Right. Okay. Um, Emmanuel, I have it on the screen. Emmanuel says, does uh, Dr. Mawata Ashby have a course in Meruneta? And is it correct that the language have no negative words? Oh, does the mental net okay? Okay, the answer to the first part of the question is we don't have a, a specific course. I've done lectures on it, uh, which are available, but uh, we have a book on it, Ancient Egyptian Hieroglyphs for Beginners, and that is written as a course. It has something like uh, I can't remember how many lessons it has in it, twenty something lessons uh, in in learning the the, the basic uh, hieroglyphic text, and uh, as far as the 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 negative words uh sure we just just give you one you ask me a question that you asked me a question i said on on means negative it means right. no right and we have the, the negative confessions you know i have not lied i have, I have not stolen i have not etc cetera, etc cetera. right so okay it's a versatile language like any other that has ever been in history Okay, someone sent me, and I guess they, they're scared to come on here and act, so they text me. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, was the Meduneta meant to be spoken? 
I'm gonna let you answer that. I'm not yeah. I'm interviewing. <laughs> so I'll let you answer it. It's just kinda yeah, when I thought about it, I'm like, okay. Yeah. Was it meant to be right. spoken or was it just a written language? Yeah, well it's both. But the 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 written language, uh, the the way it is written, uh, you you'd have to make adjustments in order to to speak it, because it, it, it's very pictorial, uh, and the way the way it's written with uh, with determinatives, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, you would not be able to to speak it in the same way. So, but it is a spoken language. Uh, but of course, uh, think about it. The the language that you speak. Or use the example that we, that we uh, talked about earlier. The language that uh, we speak in the mundane level of of uh, of you know this culture, you know, English, is not the same language that is spoken in hospitals. They have their own jargon. They have their own their own uh, 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 you know how should we say uh, techniques to just right. describe and things like that. The temple is the same way. You have the language, but in the temple. And application, you have a different kind of technological understanding, a different level of of application of the same terms can have a higher meanings that are to be known uh, by the initiates, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, when the Bible says taken from its original tongue, is the Meduneta the original tongue that the scripture speaks about? That which scripture speaks about? The Bible, it talks about translating it from its original tongue, from its original language. What is that well, language? Well, my understanding is that the the original scriptures that that the Bible were, were written in, at least in in the Western, the Western uh, uh, Bible, are Aramaic, I believe, and uh, some from the the uh, the early Jewish or the ancient Jewish. Uh, some of of the teaching was taken from the Zoroastrians, mm -hmm. and uh, the other level is from the uh, from the Kemetic, from the ancient Egyptian, uh, and that went into that developed into the latest form, which is the Coptic. Uh, and so, if they're talking about the you know translating from the original language, uh, it, it depends on which one we're talking about. So you know we have to know more to answer that better. Okay, uh, Jamila Sekhmet wants to know what is what is the Kemetic diet like do we did we do we have available what our comedic brethren family ate back then in order to even have that kind of diet today what is the comedic diet well knee and knee means yes <laughs> and uh, uh we have a, a book that i mentioned earlier the comedic diet mm -hmm. which is a, a pretty thick book uh that that documents the the diet Especially the the diet of the initiates, uh, because you have, uh, you know, people. You know, the general population can eat junk food, and there's some evidence that some people ate junk food there too. But when they went to the sunu or the doctor, of uh, the time, you know, they would be told to do cleansing, to do, uh, uh, to to take uh, emetics, you know, so that they can cleanse themselves, do fasting, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then eat a a vegan diet essentially, no right. fish, no no meat. Of course, no alcoholic uh, beverages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so you have a, a physical food. And then another description talks about the food for the ka. And the food for the ka is for the for the, the astral body. Right. And that's your, your mind, your mental body. And then uh, there is also uh, food for the soul. And the, the soul is... It, 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 it's, it's not ham hocks and, and, and ribs and... Uh, and junk, uh, you know, the, the soul food uh, is when, when you're you're taking in the when you when you've cleared out enough of the degradation and the the disparity of life, you're able to raise yourself to a, such a high level that you can commune with divinity directly, and that is the 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 food of the soul. The food of the soul will not be satisfied with anything else but its own higher nature. Mm. So you, you cannot have have uh, food for the soul be a, 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 a loved one or right. a relationship. It cannot be a physical food. And even your, you, you, you cannot, there are people who love their career. They love their physical life and they love things they do. Nothing you can do in time and space 
can suffice for the soul. Nothing that you can that you can perceive with your mind can be sufficient for the soul at that level. So these are three levels of the food that every human being needs to have. So if a person eats eats a perfect physical diet, a vegan diet, organic food, et cetera, et cetera, but you have uh, negative mental food, mm. you're, you're angry all the time, or you're fighting uh, with, with your friends or your spouse or something like that, you're miserable, uh, you don't know what you're, what, what you want to do with your life or whatever, but you eat an organic diet and, and you do fasting, <laughs> it's, you're still going to lead to disease. Can we go on a spiritual fast? Can we go on a mental fast, an intellectual fast, a talk fast? Uh, you know, I, uh, my father's Blackfoot Native American, and, uh, you know, I, I did a talk fast several times. Mm -hmm. um, is that healthy? Sure, sure. But but uh, I've done that too. But you, you can do a, a, a speech fast. Uh, but then uh, when somebody comes comes to you and asks you something, you go, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, or you, you write it, you write something, <laughs> you can't do it like that. <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to go to have quiet time and silence time and realize that the world will go on without you and it's not going to go to, you know, go to hell and that you don't have to be involved with every single thing of the world as so you can disconnect. And that's that's more of the, the you know, to help the, the mental fast. Right. So you can withdraw. The idea is that you're trying to extricate yourself from the the constant chattering of the mind. That's that's set. That's your ego that's trying to decide dissect your your soul. Right. You're trying to extricate from that. Right. So yes, just as you have three kinds of food, you have you can do three kinds of fasting. Fasting from physical food, fasting from thinking all the time. You can practice meditation to get to a level where you are withdrawing yourself from thought itself. And that stage is called Anrutev, that 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 location of of experience. Right. And then for, for the soul, you are you are communing. And so you are fasting from your mental self and you're fasting from your physical self at that level. Right. So I'm sure brothers like yourself, and maybe I'm speaking ahead of time, did not get to this point by yourself. Is who are some of these other people around you as your that that make up your support unit? Um, I mentioned earlier when we first started to show the business aspect of the people sending me text messages to make sure this thing happened and you know, here's some questions, grips, some bullet points, and that kind of thing. Who are some of these other people that you can kind of talk to us about as far as your support unit? Because it's very important. I know I need my support unit, especially through the trying time that I'm going through now with the passing of my family member. Who who are some of those individuals? And I hope I'm not putting you on the spot because I don't, yeah. No, that's okay. Okay. As far as my current uh, support uh, team, shall we say, uh, first of all, is my spiritual partner. Uh, Jai Ashby, uh, mm -hmm. except I mentioned her earlier, she's going to be conducting the uh, the trip to Kemet uh, next year, right. and she has she has edited uh, uh, several of the books, and she is writing her own book. She has, she's actually written the book, and she's writing another one now, uh, as well. And uh, so she is is a, a the, the 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 primary uh, support, shall we say? She's she's like the the if I was to say mm -hmm. like the, the the newt, goddess newt in that context right uh, and we have other other metadu other other uh, gods and goddesses that help uh we, we have uh, one uh Bequet, who who helps me she's, she's more than a secretary she helps our, our our organization of the scheduling and the classes and she she helps me with a lot of different things transcribing uh and we also have uh others others who are initiates who have been with me for for decades now actually uh who are also uh, conducting programs of their own in their own cities and uh they, they also still attend classes uh, evolving with the teaching uh, and there are priests and priestesses uh, in in, uh, in in study she sent and um okay and uh, so so they uh, I'm, I'm getting instructions from my my support here <laughs> 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 That's why we had to support you in place. <laughs> so, so the one that you communicated with you a lot, uh, probably as our Setna. Okay. He's he's one of our old timers, and we have uh, a, a whole other uh, group of uh, equal old, old timers who are very devoted. 
uh, to the teaching and to, to the assistants. They travel with us to Kemet, right, on our tours, etc. No, that's 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 beautiful. Um, so as we wrap this up, please let people know how they can contact you, what kind of information you want them to have about your tours, classes, or how can they reach you? How can they donate? Um, yeah, just kind of leave the people with that thing. I'm sure people are grabbing their pens and, and paper right now to write this information down. So give them the, the tours, give them the classes, give them the information on how to reach you as we close out. Okay, I think uh, you're also gonna be receiving a flyer is what I was just informed. Uh, also, uh, the, the best thing, I think the number one thing is to go to egyptianyoga.com. Uh, egyptianyoga.com, that's our, our main site and mm -hmm. it is basic information about everything we do and all the links are there to the bookstore, to Kim University, uh, to the Egyptian Mysteries, uh, we have a separate Egyptian Mysteries site. Uh, that's, uh, I think those links uh, will will be the best to start with. Uh, I would also invite people to to join. We have a, a current class that we are doing, which is meant specifically for for people who want to have introduction into the teaching. Uh, and we do a, a monthly lecture. And I think the, the fee for that is only like 750, something like that. Essentials. Uh, the, the essential fundamental teachings of Shatav Netter. Okay. And, and so that I think will be a good, uh, those, those lectures are one to two hours and they're done monthly, but also you join, you can get access to, to the previous lectures oh, okay. that were given. And I think that series is going to continue to the end of the year. Right. And so that, I think that'll be a really good uh, introduction. The virtual temple. And then in the, the uh, Kim University, we have other courses. Uh, the main one, uh, and this is for people who are wanting seriously to take a step into the, the, the temple wisdom and the philosophy. And that's Egyptian Mysteries Level 1. And, and uh, you know, getting through that, uh, allows a person to really be ready for the more advanced courses, right? Uh, which which we have, which are, are based on the more advanced scriptures. Right. And I've done translations of all of those. Everything that we do is based on on original translation of the wisdom. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm sorry, you got to go back and watch it again on YouTube. <laughs> it's Professor Griffin from Serious Minds RN TV, and my guest was Dr. Mawata. Ashby. Um, Dr. Mawata Ashby, thank you very much for coming on. And any time that you would like to come on, whatever it is you want to do, um, if you want to do something a little bit more in depth, you could send me the PowerPoint, whatever it is. I can put it up as you talk and we can go from there. Whatever it is that you want to do, um, the door is open to you and your family and your support unit, your, your support team, all right? Just contact me and let me know when you want to come on a week in advance then, and we're good. The doors are open to you. But we really appreciate you um, for giving some of us some serious clarity tonight. All right? Some real serious clarity. And uh, I'm, out, I'm I'm clear about some things now, uh, especially about these 75 books. And I only have 10, but I'm good. I'm going to work my way towards the 75. <laughs> and, uh, but we really appreciate you. Any, any last thoughts, any last words? I was just to say, Dua, thank you for being so open uh, you know, to, to listen to the wisdom philosophy. Uh, and uh, I know that, that your, your spiritual partner also uh, attended a uh, seminar. Yeah. Uh, my spiritual partner conducted. And so I think that was very nice and very positive. And excuse me? And she's highly And <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, so, so do do well again. Th thank you for being so open to the teaching and for giving this opportunity. Oh, give thanks. And she and she did tell me about it. She was like, okay. I says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know the brother. I know the yeah. I'm, I'm familiar. I got. It. Oh, I didn't know you had that book. I didn't know you had that book. I said, wait a minute. Put my books back. <laughs> Gotta get your own. <laughs> but anyway, we really appreciate you. Good brother. Like I said, anytime you want to come on, I want to thank the Serious Minds family, Johnny Taylor, of course, Quan, Alex, all the Serious Minds family that come on and support the channel. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Ashby, the reason why we call the channel Serious Minds, because Serious Minds 
attract serious minds and you've attracted some serious minds tonight. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you, good brother. Okay, do it. All right, thank you very much. All right, give thanks. All right, family, that's Dr. Mawata Ashby. Um, it's Mawata Ashby. Um, of course, pick up the books, support the brother, go to the website, um, um, check out what the brother's doing on and offline. All right, family, it's Professor Griff. I know I kept y'all longer than I normally do. Do I thank y'all very much. Really appreciate you. Love y'all to life. All right. Um, serious minds for serious minds. Seriously. Peace. Professor Griff, I'm out.